Your ancient future is now. Is now. Welcome to Kim West. Believe, follow me, and you see that I'm divine. Rock and rhyme, cause it's culture. Form of expression, chaotic with inflection, but tight is with intention. Let the vibe saturate, nothing can penetrate. Looking for the escape, but there's no escape. Haven't you heard? You caught inside the clutches of the figure eight. Mutilated and see, roaming my state. Can't wait to take shape, infiltrate, do beat breaks. Meet me at the Golden Gate with the seven iron eight. That's why I tell you niggas just to concentrate. Wait a minute now. I intend to hold these banks fully accountable for any assistance they'll receive. And this time, we'll have to clearly demonstrate how taxpayer dollars result in more lending for the American taxpayer. I also intend to enact tough, common-sense regulatory reforms equal to the challenges of the 21st century financial system so that a crisis like this never happens again. And when I meet with the leaders of the other G20 nations next month, I'll ask them to join us in these actions, because in an age when financial transactions often cross borders, global coordination is essential to safeguard against future crises. But the truth is that these problems in the financial market, as acute and urgent as they are, are only part of what threatens our economy. And we must not use the need to confront them as an excuse to keep ignoring the long-term threats to our prosperity, the cost of our health care and our oil addiction, our education deficit and our fiscal deficit. Now, I'm not choosing to address these additional challenges just because I feel like it or because I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm doing so because they're fundamental to our economic growth and ensuring that we don't have more crises like this in the future. You see, we cannot go back to endless cycles of bubble and bust. We can't continue to base our economy on reckless speculation and spending beyond our means, on bad credit and inflated home prices and over-leveraged banks. This crisis teaches us that such activity is not the creation of lasting wealth, it's the illusion of prosperity, and it hurts us all in the end. Instead, we must build this recovery on a foundation that lasts, on a 21st century infrastructure and a green economy with lower health care costs that create millions of new jobs and new industries, on schools that prepare our children to compete and thrive, on businesses that are free to invest in the next big idea or breakthrough discovery. We cannot wait to build this foundation. Putting off these investments for another four years or eight years or 12 years or 20 years would be to continue the same irresponsibility that led us to this point. It would be exactly what Washington has done for decades, and it will make our recovery more fragile and our future less secure. And that's a future I don't accept, not for my children and not for yours. I did not come here to pass our problems on to the next president or the next generation. I'm here to solve them. I'm here to start building an economy and a prosperity that lasts. Now, would I prefer to tackle these challenges without having inherited a trillion dollar deficit or a financial crisis? Absolutely. But that's a choice that we don't have. I don't like the idea of spending more government money, nor am I interested in expanding government's role. I've always been a strong believer in the power of the free market. It has been and will remain the very engine of America's progress. I believe that jobs are best created not by government, but by businesses and entrepreneurs like you who are willing to take risks on a good idea. And I believe that our role as lawmakers is not to disparage wealth, but to expand its reach. Not to stifle the market, but to strengthen its ability to unleash the creativity and innovation that still makes this nation the envy of the world.